this is a uh, video from Hazel, and uh, she interviewed, guess who? That's right, Ian. Interviewed Ian. How's it going? It's going good. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Yeah, all things considered. Awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me today and talk a little bit about Dragonflight. I wanted to start by asking a little bit about the about the shift away from borrowed power in expansions. This is something you talked a little bit about at the beginning of the presentation, and I just wanted to hear more about what inspired that shift and whether or not, like what it means in the future going forward in expansions after Dragonflight for bringing freshness to classes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. So I mean, I think a lot of it is, uh, as mentioned, just a response to, to both player feedback and our own experiences, both playing the game and as developers. I think. We Thank fucking God I hear that. Thank fucking God. It's like, basically what he's saying is like, this is what happened as far as I know with Final Fantasy. So in Final Fantasy, this is a great example that I use all the time, is that in Final Fantasy, you have a throw attack, usually a range attack. Like warriors have this, Dark Knights have this, and it was called, I think, Unmend. And uh, for Dark Knights, and if you use this attack, you um, you you break your combo for your melee attacks because you're supposed to go one two three one two three basically. But if you use this in the middle of it, it will uh, it will not happen. But people that worked on the game were like, "Wow, this sucks," and they got rid of it. Yep, they got rid of it because they played the game and they're like, "This sucks. Let's get rid of it." Problem solved recognize that you know the, the double-edged sword of creating something awesome and empowering and complex like artifact weapons and legion was that well if we're building this thing that we really can't sustain carrying forward we have to take it away from you and losing something awesome sucks and having yeah. every expansion begin with like we just dug a hole and now we have to fill it with a new thing where at best maybe if we can get get you back to feeling like you were before that's not success. That's not forward movement. That's not exciting. Still louder. Yeah. And I think so. One of the questions was like, how do we get out of? It? How do we? How do, how do we get into this? And how do we get out of it? Yeah. I think that led us to just kind of reflect on the past dozen or so years, and you know, realize that part of what used to fill that gap every expansion was new talents and getting talent points to spend and carry forward with you. Remember that, boys. And whereas I think you know the original original system one of the challenges there was you know by the time we'd gotten into cataclysm coming into mists we were looking at like 70 80 point trees with just tremendous depth we're getting deeper and deeper. sounds great yep i love it let's go let's go let's get let's have a talent tree with 150 points in it yep all right let's go and they were kind of collapsing upon themselves in a sense um you know, i think one of the original strengths of the classic talents back in the day was the relative weighting of your spec versus the rest of your class. Like a build yeah. might be 30-21 or 31-20, but you still had two-thirds as many points in your off spec as you did in your main spec. That's a good point. By the time you got to Wrath, and even if we continue that further into Cataclysm, well, now you were putting 51 points, you were 51-20, and you were like, and so continuing to go 40, deeper and deeper yeah. was not sustainable there. And so when we took a step... Yeah, it's almost like basically in, in vanilla, I think we had like, was it nine classes or eight classes in vanilla WoW? And like now we have 40 something. Like each, each spec is its own class. And I think making classes more fundamentally, like a warrior or a mage or whatever, I think that was a good thing. 40? Yeah, because there's 40 different specs. There's 38? Oh, I thought it was 40. Back and, and try to build a system from scratch that we could imagine capturing the strengths of the original talents, the customization and flexibility players have grown accustomed to in recent years, but also be a foundation to build upon for many expansions going forward. That is what led us to where, where we landed here with separate class and spec trees so that as we, you know, we can expand them both over time without the shifting the ratio, recognizing that if you let players do it, they're always going to put more points in their spec tree. They're always going to want to be Better resto druids, better. Well, yeah, because you remember back in uh, fucking Wrath, like I would screenshot Death Knight's talent trees all the time. It's like one of the most toxic things I ever did. It is like I would screenshot their talent trees just so I could talk shit about them. And, and like this is what would happen all the fucking time. And I would screenshot the trees and I would be like, wow, look at this fucking moron. This guy put every single point that he had into Frost. And you know what? I think you should be able to do that. 
I do. I think you should be able to do that. I, I think if you want to be a big, dumb idiot, Frost Tank was good. Frost Tank was good. Frost Tank, in my opinion, was the best. Uh, Blood Decay was the most unique, though. And so the only thing that Blood Decay was good at was tanking Sartharian three Drake Breaths because it was OP. But besides that, like, yeah, that's the way that I feel about it, is that it was just so much more enjoyable uh, to be able to just choose the way that you want to design your character. And it's also with, like, uh, classic talent trees, you're right that there's always going to be a meta but there are people that, like, whenever you have, like, all these little different things you can change around, there are people that go around that meta. People experimented with things all the time, especially if they, like, especially whenever you can do it without having uh, friction. De you know, de dealing damage with their fire mage spells or whatever else. Um, and that's, you know, an exciting place for us to invest our efforts and our focus in a way that we know is going to make the game better after Dragonflight, when we're here talking about what our next expansion after that is going to be, and when you're leveling Beyonce. I, I think that's a really, really good insight, and I'm glad that he's saying that, because I, I think that it's so important to think beyond the current expansion. And, like, if I had a chance to ask Ian a question, I would be like, like, what do you think about, like, the, the item level bloat? Like, because I hope that we don't get a stat squish. I don't want a stat squish. I want to do big numbers. I, I want to have, like, I, I want to crit for, like, fucking 500,000. And, and, like, you know, then we go back to the little numbers after that. But I want to I wanna fucking just pop off, man. Do big numbers, man. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I didn't spend this whole fucking expansion gearing up my character to have it reset, bro. I don't want this shit reset again. Quit resetting my fucking numbers. 70. You're not going to be leaving this behind. You're going to be building upon it. So you envision adding more layers and more rows of talents in the future going forward? Absolutely. It's lit. Okay. I'm glad. I think we've, we've built the system. And I think, like, for example, I think the WAD stat squish, I feel like classes were really fun to play in Legion because of the WAD stat squish. Even though WAD sucked, and, like, I hated playing my class in WAD, I think that it was a good decision because the way that Blizzard designed classes in Cataclysm and Mists of Pandaria, their solution to making classes more interesting was giving them the abilities that other classes already had. And there were a few exceptions, right? Symbiosis, Alter Time, very cool. But the majority of them were completely unnecessary. Anyway, I mean, could, could, could we sustain that for 20 years? Probably not, but we don't, you know, realistically, we think of, you know, there's a there's a threat a horizon of sorts where yeah we want to make sure that this will work later. for two to three expansions and then beyond that it's sort of a future us problem where it's, yeah so much will have changed between now and then we, can, we it's not That's really true. responsible for us to like you know make plant firm stakes in the ground and if we're compromising yeah. the excitement of our designs because we're not sure how they're going to scale eight years from now we're doing a, a disservice to players today. He's completely right. He's completely fucking right. Like, that's totally true. And I know it might sound like, but, well, what about the future of the game? It's going to be fine. What do you think Blizzard's going to be like? Uh, they're going to decide halfway through. Uh, you know what? Um, we're sick of milking. The f we're, we're sick of milking them out of millions. We're done with that. Let's not, let's not do that anymore. No, yeah, that's a smart, good insight. It, it's a very pragmatic insight. And that's why I, I like it is because it, it's pragmatic. And eight years from now won't matter if we're not making an amazing game for players today. Um. Great. Fucking great. There we go. Yes, exactly. Just to, to quickly touch back on another piece of your first question, I, mean, I don't think it means necessarily the complete end of borrowed power, so to speak. I mean, gear is borrowed power, right? Gear is the original borrowed power. You have a tier set. You get your four-piece set bonus. He's and you know right. You're going to leave it behind right. and move on and replace it with something new. And there are always going to be, you know, systems like that and more self-contained things. But I, I and I, we don't necessarily, you know, want to slam the door shut entirely there because I think there is something exciting about patch-specific systems or things that really feel thematically tied to a piece of content. But in terms of the like expansion spanning alternate progression that is, you know, meant to be what drives your character through an expansion, that is not in the cards for the foreseeable future. So it's fair to say that there's not going to be like a Dragonflight active ability that we're going to be using in this new expansion, that our power is tied to our classes instead? Correct. Okay. Exactly correct. That, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Absolutely. I'm okay with that. 
Yeah, I swear Ian got his all ideas from Dragonfight about your stream. No, the thing is, like, everything that I say on my stream is things that other people have said, too. Like, I, I mean, a, a lot of people are saying the same stuff that I'm saying. Yeah, that's good. Like, I, I yeah, the thing is, like, this is good. Big good. Uh, I'm going to say, guys, listen, I'm going to give y'all a chance. I'm going to give you a chance. I know we put it in sub mode for a little bit. We're going we're gonna to take it out of sub mode. But I just want to make sure that you guys know, like, we'll put it back on if people act like animals, okay? Quit acting like animals. Please. Yeah, act like animals, you're going to get banned. But please stop. Like, I don't want to have my mods put in extra work for this. They just want to watch the thing too, okay? So, like, yeah, act like animals, like, I'm going to have to have to put it back on, okay? Just stop. People being hostile for no reason, because they can be. All right, here we go. It was cool to see um, some of the greatest hits from the past expansions potentially make it into the talent trees, though. That was really yeah. exciting. It's something we're looking forward to just, you know, hearing feedback from and talking through over the course of Alpha and Beta. Did you have a thing where you could blade storm all the I'm time? Sure, eagle eyed observers saw things like Convoke and the sample Druid talents. Like, what are other things that, you know. Oh, so we're actually getting. That's so. I'm so glad they're doing that. Because, like, I think that Condemn is really cool. And I always want it. I don't want it for a while. I don't want it for a... I always want it. don't want to leave behind or that you'd love to have back. And here, here, Ian, I got another great idea. Add back Reaping Flame. That was my favorite thing about BFA. The entire expansion was just that one ability. That was the only thing I liked. That was the thing I liked the most about the expansion. Do you remember wearing your full versatility stat because Reaping Flame scaled with versatility and taking somebody from 40% to zero instantaneously with a 40 yard range cast and it's some little nub. And it was, it felt so good to be able to do that, man. Oh my God, it felt so good. Options are on the table. Sounds broken. We've been it hearing a bit today and something I'm very curious about is sort of this new Dragonflight almost version of the Renown system where you're able to um, work with different factions in Dragonflight and yeah. progress them in a way that's similar to Renown. And I'm curious if you can tell me more about like the differences and whether or not there's player power tied there or if it's more of a cosmetic thing. Um, yeah, so I, I think we're, we're looking at evolving what some of our endgame reputations have been. Reputation hasn't really changed much since literally 2005. There's this old structure of like 3,000 points, then 6,000, then 12,000, then 21,000 as you go from, you know, honored to revered to exalted. Right, those are the right it numbers. It gets progressively, you know, yeah, harder right. to reach the next tier. There isn't much visibility in how we give you rewards. You have to look at it, you have to find a vendor or a quartermaster somewhere and like look ahead to see what's required. And I think there are aspects of how Covenant Renown worked in Shadowlands that solved a number of those problems in terms of more measured, steady progression, laying out on a yeah. track what goals were ahead of you. Um, and I think that's something that we want to adapt to some of our end game structures in Dragonflight. So imagine instead of, you know, your Venthyr Renown or your Nightfae Renown, it's this Centaur Clan or... The... I feel like Renown is generally a better version of Rep. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, what, what, what do y'all think? McConnell, what do you think? Uh, I don't like Renown. You don't like Renown? You like Rep better? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think Renown's fine. I mean, I think they should have both. It's the same as, like, you know how they have this in, like, uh, Najdatar? Where I was just at, and they have it also in Xerath Mortis, where, like, you can do uh, daily quests, and you can also do world quests. Uh, I think that's what they should have. They, they should have, like, some that work, like, the old way, because I think the old way is good. It's fine. And I think they should have new ones that have uh, the same thing. Yeah, just have both. No rep, please? I think rep is fine. Uh, time gate rep. I think time gating is a problem. I think people have a problem with like a lot of people don't like uh, renown because of how it was implemented, not what it is. Explorers League that you're building renown with and working towards unlocking goals along the way, not necessarily through the same like you know structured weekly you know weekly quest where you have to do the same quest every week like you did for your covenant. And also, but more just open ended objectives. Um, in terms of the things that would be available through these tracks, you know, I, I think nothing that we've currently planned is that sort of like auxiliary multiplicative player power that lies outside of our other systems of course there can be cosmetics of course there's gear there right the same way you know for if you're an outdoor world oriented player who doesn't do mythic plus who isn't doing progressive rating you know all those players still want and deserve and need item progression of their own and i think this is 
I'm you gotta more... make the items higher item level than bro like it, it they're too low like 239 like for the last patch like two two thirteen or 207 they were just bad like if, if you want to do that like we had good item level. and like ian remembers this and we're back in like a fucking Sunwell, like an Isle of Qualdanis, where you'd get that necklace from uh, the fucking sh uh, the Shattered Sun. The necklace was fucking insane. It was so good. And, and like people would use this until like a Black Temple or, or like a uh, Sunwell even sometimes. It goes to 252 at Zerath Mortis. I would be okay. 252 is not enough. I feel like 252 is not enough either. I would be okay. So let's compare 252 versus um, in like Timeless Isle, you got 535 and then normal mode. 535 was equivalent to Mythic, or sorry, Heroic uh, Throne of Thunder without Thunder Forging. Uh, well, who, who cares about this? A lot of people cared about this. 252 is raid gear though. Yeah, it's normal mode raid gear. I feel like if you gave world questers and like world content people a few good items, like a few like 265s, a few like maybe a 270 or something like that, I don't think that'd break the game. I really don't think so. I don't think that'd break the game. I think that'd be fine. It gives them chase pieces. For what? For playing the game? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, for fixed slots. What? Yeah. Wait, why? Just why? for playing the game. Yeah, playing the game. Yeah, I mean, playing the game. They're they're farming out shit like they we should be really able to get something good. We really have gotten. We have gotten to the point where, when people used to say, "Oh, you just want to be able to log in and get epics in the mail," is actually true. That's where we're at with WoW. Well, no, because they have to like farm out like a rep and like do the dailies for it and like spend time investing and in getting the gear. Uh, I actually this, hope. This I think they're gonna do that. By the way, I think I think they're gonna do that with the crafting stuff. This is horrible. Yeah, I think they're going to do that. Yeah, they had to play our economy. Exactly. Like, yeah. But exalted vendor item shirt? Yeah. I mean, there's always been really good exalted item vendors. Like, I, this, this has always been a thing. What do you mean? Like, do you remember? What, what's this ring? Do you remember the ring that you got in Burning Crusade? Uh, the, the lower city ring with expertise? I know, obviously, that's because it was changed, right? But in BC, I thought that was good that you had to run a dungeon a bunch of times to get a good item. Mythic gear for World Quest farm? Not quite, but maybe a couple of good pieces. Bro, back in my day, epics were epic. Which day was that? Well, my day. Yeah, right. Streamlined, elegant way to have those goals that you can work towards on your own pace as you choose to help this group or that group when you log in every day. That's super cool. I'm really excited That's about cool. that. I have some questions about crafting. You said some yeah. really interesting yeah, things really this morning about, about this crafting shit. and about being able yeah. to build identity and like investment in your profession and have that be part of your own character's identity. And I'm really curious as to what kind of investment are crafters going to need to put into their into their profession to kind yeah. of build that sort of notoriety? Because if everybody can do it, then you're not very notorious. Are we talking gold investment like it was with legendaries? Are we talking pure time? Is there an are, like a luck component? Um, I think, I mean, Time is a big piece of it. It's what you choose to dedicate your character's focus towards. Um, we're, we're definitely not, you know, gold is a part of it. And certainly playing, you know, being a part of the economy is part of every crafter and has been forever. Even if you're just a blacksmith who isn't a miner and is getting raw materials to craft them into things and resell for a profit. But I don't think we're looking at gold as, as the sort of backbone of startup costs the way we did with legendaries for example where a crafter might feel like they need to invest up front without that's any... good because like the gold thing it turned everything into like a wow token economy yeah i i, I it, it turned shit into like a wow token economy i'm, I'm not a fan of that like i just uh, i i didn't like that at all and so yeah get rid of that it's like it doesn't make it like a, a casual player isn't going to farm the gold they're just going to buy the gold and like that sucks Stop making this a thing. Instant re re you know, recouping it, a million gold and skilling up, you know, a particular pattern in order to be able to make a thing that they would then recoup, recoup over time. Here, really, it's more about choice. It's more about specialization. And I think that's how we're hoping to achieve differentiation. Um, because I think part of identity is being able to do things as a blacksmith 
but not every blacksmith can do. If all blacksmiths are identical, then it's like, well, I'll just find a generic blacksmith, hand them your stuff, they'll click combine. Um, specializations are an interesting path there, something that we didn't really get into much today, but we'll be talking about a lot in the weeks to come. That's what I'm fucking curious about. Because New World, the way that New World does crafting is very interesting. So in New World, you can level up every single crafting to 200. But the amount of time that it takes to do that is so massive that most people can't do it. Like, it, that's what it is. Like, yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's fucking nuts. So, like, number one, there's that. And then also you have the trophy system, too. So the trophy system gives you a higher chance to craft stuff as like an armor smith. So in New World, I think it's actually an accomplishment that they have is that each player actually is an armor smith or a weapon smith or something like this because there are so many different things that you can do that you can put into it to make your character better at crafting those items. And it takes so much investment that few people can even do one, much less any of the other ones. Best part of New World is all crafting is relevant. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really big thing. Is that each of these professions actually also has a talent tree, a specialization to it, so that rather than just picking, let's say, armorsmithing or weapons, oh my god, you can invest in armorsmithing and then further in making plate armor and further in making helms. Jesus, that's fucking crazy. You know what that fucking reminds me of, man? This is what it reminds me of. I'm fucking inventory's full. Oh, just give me a minute, okay? Reminds me of this shit. Remember this back in the day where we could uh, we could put different points into like different types of fish that we wanted to get. This was awesome. I love this. Yeah. So this is a, a very good thing. I'm glad. And have bonuses to your ability to Big make good. higher level ones at a higher level of quality that are at least initially yeah. exclusive with making the choice to invest in making male gloves or in making two-handed swords. Uh, Long term players and completionists who we know there's you know a decent Venn diagram overlap between hardcore crafters and completionists um, will be able yeah. to eventually make all the things, but that's a that's a long term completionist goal. I think thinking back, um, a really successful example of this was actually you know kind of thematic with our wrath announcement today, um, jewel crafting and wrath, where early, you know, early on you would do jewel crafting dailies and get currency that that you could use to buy patterns off a vendor. And you could so one of my uh, a guy in my guild. Um, there were these little crystals that you had to get, and you could turn them into sons of Hodir for a rep. And at Revered, you could get the pattern to cut the uh, blue critical strike gem. And he literally hacked the game, and he changed the model of those little gems to being Ragnaros. So he could find them easier. And he got the pattern on like the second day. And he made enough money that funded him for like the rest of the time that he played the game. <laughs> like, I, I remember this very clearly. So yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> I remember this happening. I Ian is right. Choose to get the haste crit cut and someone else might get the, you know, but whatever, right? A, a different one, or you're doing int and they're doing strength. Some of that was like figuring out mar niches in the market, what gems yeah. were in high demand. Others could just be in your raiding guild. Well, you know that someone has these two covered. You're going to get the one that people, the warriors in your guild need for their gear. I feel like a lot of people aren't going to get the same fulfillment out of being able to play and use an auction house effectively because the auction houses vary so much in size. I think if they want to do this, they should make auction houses linked between different servers. So there aren't people that just have like one person who's making all of the gems. Like I, I, I think they need to do that. Not maybe not a global economy, but they should have at least like the smaller servers that have clusters. Like I, I think that they should have clusters at least. And you're complementing each other. Long term, everyone um, ends up with a lot of stuff, but as we know with crafting, especially like it's like well, I, it's really I feel the like first one step at a time. Few weeks you know? of a tier, the first couple of months of a tier, where there's the most focus on on getting that advantage and on specialization. Yeah, and so that, that that's a piece of how we hope this will play out, where you can you know be the person that if someone you know through our our BOP cooperative crafting um, slash work order system, if someone gets 
a frame or a base for a great helm from running a dungeon or from a rare mob in the world somewhere, they're going to seek out the person on their server who makes the best helms. And I think it's possible. An example of this was the Warlords of Draenor, uh, the, the, what, Garrison? Was it Garrison? Uh, remember, like, whenever you did the bunker and you would get the helmets and you would use those? Imagine if you got the helmet and then you could give it to somebody else and have them craft it into the transmog item. I think that's what it is. It's possible to be that person and be known as that person with sufficient specialization. And that's that can become part of your identity for those who want it. <laughs> and others are just going to be happy to engage in trade skills at a more shallow level, as they always yeah. have. And that's fine. We're not, we don't want to we don't want to add complexity or force people to do stuff if that's not what interests them but for those who really want to go deep in the system you want that depth to be there for them i like that a lot um this might be like a super early question i'm kind of worried about the quality thing uh mcconnell what do you think about the quality thing on crafting uh i'll be honest man i literally have not cared about crafting ever in wow at all don't what, care what about, about it. bc didn't you craft nope. like didn't care. Okay, I'm the, is... I'm the worst person to ask about professions. I literally only do that shit for the achievements. All right, that's it. Okay, all right, makes sense. Yeah, it's fun. It's just like I have to get this. Um, but yeah, I I do think that they should have a uh, like the quality increasing item level. I don't see it as like being like the end of the world as long as it's not like the best gear can be from crafting and it like turns into a lottery thing. Like that that would suck. And, and like, if, if it's somewhat uh, formulaic and deterministic. And on that note, but do you have an idea of where you see crafted gear item level fitting in the like ladder of itemization to keep these things relevant? Um, it I think it needs to be up there with the very best. And I think that means like mythic raid level. Now, the natural questions are, yeah. what do you have to do to get that gear? Exactly. Are there BOP components involved? Do some of those things come from raiding or from doing dungeons at a certain level? You know, I think we're still, we're, we, we certainly do not want and will not create a world where you can just walk to the auction house and spend millions of gold and buy a full set of crafted mythic raid gear. Well, I'm out. No, that's too bad. I thought this was going to be my expansion. I guess not. You know, uh, you know, thought thought things were gonna be going good. Yep, I'm out. That's not gonna happen. That's too bad, man. It sucks, man. Happy 42, you guys. It's not my birthday. I'm 31. I'm not 42, guys. I'm not 41. Like I'm 31. Stop it. That's not, guys. Come on. Listen, I, I want to say this, right? Is that the uh, making crafted gear as good as mythic raiding gear? Fine. But you just don't make it RNG. Don't make the craft like you craft it and then it has a low item level and it's bad now. Like that's the one thing I don't want. Wait. Please don't do that. I have an actual Go opinion ahead. about professions. Good. Okay. I think professions should return to the way they were in Wrath, where you got like really cool shit. And they were like OP as fuck, like uh, the rocket on the hands. I remember the... there was one time I killed a paladin through Bop with that rocket. Well, even still, I think they should make it like that. We're like, and dude, if you made a twink and and wrath, you could be, you could get lifeblood, which was like fucking OP because it would give you haste and, and heal you, mm -hmm. and it was fucking OP as shit. And the, oh, also if you took alchemy, you would get the 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 uh, like everlasting flask or whatever the fuck and you could like get extra stat bonuses from that and yeah your also flask you could, would last longer you, you get like the gems the with the uh like the over like 20 percent more stat on a gem yeah which is cool and uh, oh you could put a fucking the thing on your belt your belt buckle when was the last time you were able to put a fucking belt uh, a socket on your on your thing mop. as a blacksmith i can't even mop Mop yep. was the last. That was almost ten years ago, bro. Yeah, that's they should bring that shit back because that was uh, that was way cooler. Than it's the shit something you now. can do to make your character better. That's actually kind of fun. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Yeah, I'd like that a lot. That'd be great. Uh, I mean, for sure. But I think part of what has hamstrung 
the professions for, for quite a while has been the sense that like, well, okay, if you're a casual player, maybe for the first couple of weeks, they're relevant. But after that, you're not really thinking yeah. to use crafted gear. And so that's the space that we're looking to navigate where dedicated crafters can truly make the best stuff. But again, the ability to have that like co-op crafting that where you can get a BOP component without being the crafter yourself and take it to someone to have them make the thing for you can mean that there's still player investment and player achievement in doing the content involved in getting the gear. Um, I think this is probably something they learned from Classic because Classic had this a lot and it created a lot of generally positive interactions and it was a good uh, interaction between players. Uh, I, I think that's a good thing. What would you say the team has kind of learned from Shadowlands legendaries and do we have any indication of whether or not legendaries might be attempted again in Dragonflight? Um, so I think, I think we can say that, you know, the Legion slash Shadow, Shadowland style legendaries, where there's dozens of them and everyone has them, we have no plans to do that again in Dragonflight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our focus is elsewhere. We are carrying tier sets forward, for example. Um, They're I think, called artifacts you know, what, now. What we've learned there is customization is interesting. Um, having the ability, having a, a small collection of legendaries that you can swap among to empower your cool. abilities in certain ways yeah, for I like dungeons that. versus raids. Um, those are interesting layers. It was lit. And again, I, in, in a sense, I see that as kind of filling a gap that we have created ourselves by not having an extensible talent system. All right. So what he's saying is that we're still going to be able to do this, but it's not going to be something that we do with gear. It's going to be something that we do with talents. That's That sounds good. Like, yeah, that's good. Great. Uh, it, it, the Dragonflight version of that is, well, this is a talent point that you can choose to divert your build towards, and that can empower your AoEs, or that can give you this extra proc, or that can make this thing refund energy, or whatever, you know, whatever suits your purposes. Um, we'd rather just have that in our Evergreen systems. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, all of that's be clear. All that's not to say we'll never see legendaries again. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really for like the you know Sylvanas bow, the stop, the the one-off items. Yeah, that... I think that there should be like maybe this is too much, but I do wish that there was like a uh, end boss like legendaries like uh, uh, the fucking Warglaves of Azanoth, something like that. That would be fucking cool. I, I would like that a lot. That would be really fucking cool. Like, but I want badass legendaries. Like, not some kind of, like, not this thing where, like, everybody gets it type stuff, right? Actually, like, pretty rare, hard to get legendaries. And, and I would even have them, like, Siege Orgrimmar. Uh, well, Siege didn't really have legendaries, did it? I'm pretty sure it didn't. Uh, like, I'm thinking, uh, so let's see. The reason why I think legendaries like that are good and they have to come from the last boss is because... It has to be a reward from raiding because if it's not, it will turn into a requirement. So, like, what happened with, like, Shadowmorn and what happened with, like, the Dragonrath staff, for example, is, like, if you were a caster and you didn't have Dragonrath and, and Dragon Soul, it was like, well, why not? Like, why do you not have this? Like, because it's like you, guilds would recruit people with Dragonrath because it was so good. So it would have to be something that would be like a rarer drop from like a boss, like the hardest difficulty or something like that. Uh, and that way it also gives people like, because another problem with like Mythic, in my opinion, is like there's not really a lot of reasons to do it, you know? Like, yeah, it has to be rare. Like imagine if like, for example, like let me just go back over and like show you like a few items that I think it'd be really cool if they were legendaries, right? Uh, and so uh, it looked like BC, like in, in, in Sunwell. Like, if they made Apollyon the Soul Render, maybe, like, a legendary version. Or, like, more interesting, uh, how about uh, Crown of Anasirian? If this was, like, a legendary helmet, and it made you run faster, and it could drop as legendary or something like that. It was, like, 10% chance or something. That would be cool. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, Qualdonis bow. Well, they do have the bow. Uh, like, this one here, uh, Thordial. Yeah, things like this. Yeah, I, I think that'd be badass. Yeah, I don't want it to be like super, like maybe having it be a rare drop is a bad idea. But I think that there should be a way for players that do like the hardest content from like end bosses to get really cool items like that. I think that'd be good. Didn't Sylvanas have a bow? Yeah, I don't know. I, I never see anybody use it or anything. Yeah, basically relic weapons. Yeah, uh, PvP legendaries as well. 
What I would like to have with a PvP legendary, this is what I'd like to see, is what if they had a thing where... What if they did something where, like, you got an extra item slot? And you had, like, warriors had, like, their, um... Uh, you know, you had, like, your scabbard, uh... And, uh, like, or, like, a, a thrown weapon. Like, rogues had, like, a poison vial. Like, paladins had their libram back. Give druids their idols. DKs have their relics. Like, you know, uh, maybe you had, like, a book instead or something like that. Oh, libram is a book. Never mind. And, um, uh, just, like, other things like this, right? And, like, you give people an extra item slot that just buffs different abilities. That'd be cool. Like, that'd be really cool. I'd like that a lot. It's borrowed power? No, because you get you keep it. Yeah, utility stuff? Exactly. You know, feel thematic and appropriate for a piece of content where it's like, yeah, this sh like you should be able to get this as a player, and this really should be orange because of how special it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. I have a couple of questions about Drakthir um, and Invokers as they, as they kind of go together. Um, I heard that Drakthir are going to be able to actually fly the with the dragon riding system, but without necessarily using the drake. I was curious if you know oh, if they'll like also Morgan? be able to use the drake if they want to, you know, customize yes. their, their dragon. It's, it's an option yeah. for them. So, so, so I think the plan there is that sort of innate dragon as on racial, dragon. the base okay. form of, you know, gliding, being able to have momentum is something that Drakthir will just be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, the upgraded versions the players will earn through dragon riding are not something they'll be able to access in, in their Drakthir form. They just have that baseline version that's theirs. Um, so in order to take advantage of those, you will indeed want to be riding on your dragon companion. Um, you'll be doing so in visage form, since dragon riding dragon maybe gets a little weird. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, we want to make sure that everyone it's has those options that. open to them, and certainly that you can engage in the visual customization piece of it. Okay, cool. Can the Drakthir fly outside of the Dragon Isles without a mount? They can, yeah. I mean, yes. Though again, it's it's like it's like an enhanced form of gliding, effectively. Again, this okay. is the baseline, unupgraded version of, you know, you can maybe get a little bit of lift, but it's yeah, like Demon Hunter plus plus with cool momentum and physics. But you'll still want to have your flying mount if you're going across the continent. Okay, cool. I think they should change that. I think they should just let them fucking fly. Just just let them fucking fly. Like, I, I feel like what would be cool is, like, if you leveled up your dragon riding all the way, you could actually just fly. Like, you had all the other features of dragon riding, but you could also just fly. Speaking like of dragon yeah. riding, does dragon riding and this sort of, I don't want to say artifact mount, but, like, this sort of one way of getting around mean, like, a reduced focus on mounts or mount collecting Ooh. in this expansion? Uh, no. Um, oh, we're still going to make a ton of awesome mounts. And, again, the... You know, dragon riding is by calling your drake to traverse the environment, but it's not going to fully replace yeah. your regular mount while you're there. Um, you'll certainly use it with, you know, with, with restrictions that you can overcome and reduce as you improve your, your skill in dragon riding, um, whether it's to reach a place high up that you couldn't otherwise or to quickly return to town after you finished a quest. But running around areas, you know, you're still going to use your broad collection of mounts and we want to make sure that that's not something we're, we're letting up on at all. If anything, you know, tons of new creatures, a huge new beast Jerry to encounter, and we can rest assured that basically... Well, you better not do, like, eight recolors the same thing, man. Like, I just, that's so dumb. Like, just stop doing that. Like, you have, like, a few, it's fine, especially if they're, like... You know, like, a good example of recolors, you know, recolors were good? Uh, it is, like, let me see uh, and, and show these guys. Uh oh, it's fucking my camera's in the way. Uh, it's the, uh, the dire horns, right? Uh, it's all the old dire horns, like the, well, let me see, uh, dire horn, yeah, these right here, is like you get different colors from killing the different types of rares, and like, I thought that was cool, right, you get different, different type of stuff, because like, you know, the brown one spawn, and it's like, oh, well, shit, okay, I gotta kill it, because I don't have the brown one, like, that's cool, but like, one thing I don't like is whenever they introduce like a type of like a, of like a monster, or like a type of mount, and there's like an easy one to get, because I think if there's an easy one to get, it devalues the mount type. So, like, if you have, like, a really, really difficult to get mount, that's what I was saying about Proto Drakes. It didn't matter which Proto Drake you had. If you had any Proto Drake at the beginning of, uh, of the expansion, right? Like, is, this one's the best one, right? But, like, all the other ones, too, like, everybody knew that you had a big dick, right? And that's the goal. That's what you want to have. 
is you want to have things that like people can ride on and they don't have to think about oh what color is this is it uh you know is it hard to get or not you just see it objectively and it's good and you want to know another example of this so, like blizzard actually did correctly uh this expansion these right here there's these are think about it guys this is the first time that blizzard has ever added a mount into the game for gladiator players that was not available through any other means burning crusade you could get nether drakes from other places icc or wrath of the lich king you could get frost swarms from other things uh the cataclysm drakes you could get from the uh the dungeons uh sorry the bottom dungeon and uh whatever the fuck it was uh sartharian three drake not the armored ones yeah no you can't get any of these these are the most unique not armored yeah yeah but it's just still the same base model you can't get anything even close to this there's nothing even close to this in the game K legion you could get storm drakes you you had the storm drake you get two there's a storm drake from the island expeditions and a storm drake from the valajar uh paragon chest smoldering anything everyone? with it's not like well, four legs two legs any number of legs odds are good we're going to make it into a mount at some point because we know that's what you want yeah. <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> Um, the a lot of the video that was like shown of dragon riding looked really all. impactful and the motion was really cool but i'm also curious as to what's being looked at in terms of accessibility for motion sickness yeah it was it was very <laughs> swoopy and some people might have some issues with that yeah that, that that's i mean i think one of the one of the very first concerns that were really brought up was like what's this going to feel like are there concerns if you are prone to motion sickness um we have few happy guinea pigs internally who you know self-identify as very motion sick in games they've been testing it out and given feedback they've been pleasantly surprised themselves by how it felt but we also are building in you know different camera controls the option to turn off certain motion effects uh, we want good. to make sure that you know this can be as immersive as you want but for those who have challenges or have that actually harm their experience no, this is this is an important thing. Uh, the the reason why it was bad, like this same thing happened on Hands and Friends uh, back in BRF, and people said that fight gave them motion sickness too. Uh, it, it is there's it it is a, it is to nobody's benefit that Blizzard doesn't add in options like against this right it's the same thing as like wow you know let's turn off something that makes flashing lights happen because we don't want to give people seizures i don't know that seems pretty good to me okay yep that all right yeah sure it's, you want you to be able to dial it back and still just have the you know physical navigation of it without all the effects good i really appreciate that on the topic, and this one can be short, but on the topic of taking direction to inspiration of the community, which I've been super impressed by in the past couple of patches, um, there is a sure. concept that's been really popular and a rumor that was going around in the couple, past couple of months about player housing in, oh, in WoW. Shit. And I'm kind of curious as to what sort of considerations takes features like that onto or off of the table when you're yeah. looking at what to build an expansion with. Um, yeah, I mean, the player housing is a topic that comes up a ton around the team. Right? It, it's... Okay. Tons of support for it across the community and including within the team. It's something that many of us would love ourselves. Um, putting together any the, the package of features for an expansion, it's a mix of you know what thematically suits the expansion, um, what's going to appeal to different types of players, but also what would be required to deliver that feature at the level that players expect and deserve, and what would we have to give up to make that happen? And player There's housing a is a big one. Here. It's you know it's one of those things that to do. To do right would it, it's it's a big project. It's a big undertaking, and I think we we'll better get that started. If we do it, we'd probably have to. It would probably have to span multiple expansions. Like it's it's a large enough feature in terms. Good. Here's what I want. If like let's say they had something that start. Yeah, then let's get started. Let's start now. Then. Yeah, ready tier. Yeah, there it is, man. Do it for fuck's sake. Exactly. Start yesterday. Yep. I know it's, it did take multiple expansions, bro. Like, we had the, the farm in Mists of Pandaria. And then we had the garrison in BF... Or sorry, in WAD. Like, let's go to the next level. We already had two expansions of innovation on this. We, you already did it. So, just the art... Because I think we, we, we saw, you know, from doing, doing the garrisons back in Warlords... Um, 
to, fr frankly, due to resource constraints, we only were we were limited in kind of offering. This is the alliance garrison. This is the horde garrison. And people were like, "Well, I'm a blood elf. I want cool silver moon architecture in my garrison. Why can't I build that?" And the answer was like, "I mean, that was the original cost you a raid tier joke, but actually, it was kind of true. It's like, well, this is how many thousands of hours it would take to make that. Um, that's what player housing has to be, if if and when we make it happen. And so it's something that, you know." The dream is still alive. It's something we want to do, but they're not something we're going to be able to do for Dragonfly. I totally, I totally understand. Well, just just do a little bit of it. Don't do a lot. All right, that's fine. That's fine. You can't do a whole player housing. That's fine. But just do like a little. Just do like a little bit of it, right? But but like just just a little bit. Like not not. You don't have to do like a whole house. Like maybe like a player. How about like a player shack? Like can we start with like a player shack? Or or how about this? Like we do, we do like uh, like it's like the the mount you give us, right? Like that's kind of like it's kind of a customization thing, like a, a tent, yeah, or something like that, like something small, man, like a tent that's got like different, you know, like a, a embroidery on the side or something. Like we gotta start somewhere, man. Um, other things that some people have been asking about with the Reliquary and the Explorers League coming back into focus for Dragonflight, can players look forward to any new archaeology content, perhaps? Uh, so our, our profession's focus in Dragonflight is at this point on the primary crafting and gathering professions. Um, archaeology, it's something that it, it needs a fresh coat of paint. It needs some work. Um, we're not Thank you, Ian. It's been garbage. It's been so bad, and you know what's so funny about it? Is I will actually have the hot take that archaeology was not that bad in Legion. I actually don't think it was that bad. I think there were enough random little events. So back in Legion, you guys don't, don't remember this. A lot of people don't remember this. It was bad. It still needed a lot of improvement. You're right, because it was fundamentally dog shit but they made it as good as it could have been. You would uh, you would collect the little things, and you would get a little guy, and you'd have to kill the guy, and he would drop resources. Also, sometimes you would click it, and there would be like a pit lord insignia. This is from archaeology, by the way. There would be a pit lord insignia, and the pit lord you would click on, and it would summon an actual undead pit lord that you'd have to kill. Like, it was like a, a little fucking elite boss out of nowhere. That was so cool. And there were quest lines associated with it and everything. You know what I think they should use archaeology to do? Is to tell side stories. Tell side stories and stuff like that. And, and like have it built into the quest lines in that way. Have it do like what archaeology does in real life. Not super happy with really how that yeah, so played out or where that profession has ended up. It's not something that's going to be part of our initial efforts in Dragonflight. I think thematically, the idea of learning about the relics, learning about the past, and collecting things will be something that happens across the Dragon Isles, but we're not planning to return to the like excavation minigame form of it. Um, we want Good. to figure out something better to do with that in the future, but it's not part of our plans for Tenno itself. Okay. Uh, anything that's good I always saw I thought the excavation thing in a uh, lost Ark was dog shit too like running around like there is nothing in my opinion that is more boring than a metal detector like I'm sorry it's just it's not my thing man like I, I, I no I don't want to fucking walk around oh what is it oh thank God it's a fork. Great. We'll put that on the pile of forks. On the horizon in terms of pet battle content, after the dungeons were kind of wrapped up, some people have been very eager. Some people. I wouldn't people. know any of them, but very eager to uh, see what's coming next. Um, I mean, so and, and n nothing huge for Dragonflight itself, though, as always, we're going to have, you know, a whole new array of stuff to tame and capture and incorporate in your collections and outdoor challenges. Um, Something I'd love for I'd love for us to take a, a a crack at improving PvP pet battles. Um, I think there's room for an alternate mode there. Something like you know something that's a bit more asynchronous, where like you set up a defensive team, and like a lot of mobile games do stuff like this effectively, where like you set up your defensive team and then you can instantly challenge other people's. Because um, right now, part of the challenge is 
just the critical mass of like trying to queue up and go through the motions and find enough people, even if we incentivize it, like with the weekly quest or whatever, mm -hmm. it's still pretty tough. And if you try for it's the first- It's because the rewards suck and it takes too long and it's RNG. Here, here's one way you can do it instead is like add in smaller rewards that you can get like a 5,000 PVP pet battles. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? 5,000 PVP pet battles. Oh my God. No rewards, just make it fun. Yeah, I mean, like, you could make it as an auto battler. I mean, like, maybe that would be better. I don't know. Like, I, I dude, the thing is for me is, like, with pet battles, like, you've got to keep this in mind, okay? Give me a second. Uh, Asmongold pet battle. Where is it? Uh, shit. Uh, where is it? See, like, I made videos about pet battling a long time ago like i'm talking about like look at this i'm going to scroll all the way down this is my this is my video and where is this mr pandaria probably somewhere right like where the hell is it big dick pet battle champ tips and tricks look at this tips and tricks 2013 okay this is just what i would do day saver Days, yeah, I, I would have, yes, th th there was one of my, the last dire horn that I would use, I call his name Day, I call him Day Saver, I renamed him, and people said, what, why is he called Day Saver, it's because he saves the day, he would always win the game, like, this shit was fucking fun, man, yeah, it's the same room, yeah, it's the same room, why would it be different, yeah, I, I actually, I, I used to love doing PvP pet battles, they were fun as fuck time you were jumping into the very deep end of a very shark filled pool um whereas i think there could be something much more accessible and fun there uh i'd love to see us do it but other things are taking priority for dragonflight launch that's totally fair makes sense sounds interesting though that makes sense uh i had a quick one that i actually missed on the topic of uh of the drakthir class i read on the website i was looking through the uh, the splash screen there and it said that they were mid-range and i'm curious as to what that means in context of range dps like are they executing their rotation they from 40 from or 30 yards. or 20 yards yeah. or um exact exact number tbd mm -hmm. um i like pro you're probably going to want to be more like 25 to 30. um you know what i hope they make them play like red mage make them play like red mage that, that's what I want to see. Yeah, make him play like Red Mage. That would be fucking badass. Uh, I, I, think, I thought Red Mage was like one of the coolest... Like of all the classes that I saw in Final Fantasy, Red Mage, as soon as I saw what it could do, I was like, it's lit. We're playing it. Absolutely. I think it's so cool. Now, I'm not, I don't really like playing it all the time, right? But like in terms of thematics and everything, it's so fucking fun, man. It's iconic. Feeding of hunters stuff, yeah, has like long, long range like. a couple of specs that occasionally have even you know range boosting stuff beyond forty. Yeah. Um, and some of that is, you know, I think for directional nukes, you know, those oh, those probably can have the standard range. People that might not play Final Fantasy don't really understand what Red Mage is. So Red Mage, like imagine like a fencer. And like so it's a guy, but he casts spells and he also has like a fencing rapier, right? So like he'll cast spells and then once he reaches a certain energy level with his spells, he can jump into melee and do a combo of melee attacks that he built up with his like uh spells. And he jumps in and does a, a melee attack combo that does a fuckload of damage, and then he does like a backflip out of it, right? It's like Zoro or something like that. Yeah. Uh it's like I think the best example uh basically like almost like an outlaw rogue if an outlaw rogue had like an entire spec built around attacking from range magic zoro yeah there you go it's just it was fucking cool man but it, like things like breath attacks or cones that are part of the evoker's repertoire um you'll probably want to be a bit closer to your enemies and some of that is just it's a bit of the of the feel of playing an evoker as distinct from other range classes but again we want to make sure it doesn't feel like an undue restriction where you know your raid has to constrain their positioning to accommodate the evokers in your ranged clump or whatever that's the kind of thing we're gonna that's, that's kind of an aspirational thought initially but we're gonna dial that in over the course of play yeah it's something that sounds cool that they can't attack from quite as long as they have to be closer to the boss but it's something that like immediately falls apart as soon as it's actually actually put into practical play yeah so i'm glad they're not doing that testing and feedback okay that makes sense that yeah, was one it, of the questions that i had when we were talking about breath attacks is that that could be a very long range breath 
<laughs> and then just to wrap this up, do you have any personal point of excitement with Dragonflight that you would like to talk about yourself that you haven't had a chance to yet? Um, let's see. Uh, we've touched on most of them. I think I'm, I'm personally just so excited about the talent system and just like, Good. I, want, I want us even before alpha, I hope to see us release some of our talent trees just for community dissection and feedback and let fan sites make their calculators and start playing around with them, both to, you know, get that information out there and to start getting feedback to the team on how we can make them yeah, even better. That's good. Um, one thing I haven't had a chance to talk about uh, that I think is hopefully pretty cool. We have some fun plans for Mythic Plus in, in Dragonflight that we didn't okay. get a chance to talk about in the announce today. Um, in some ways, what we're doing for Shadowlands Season 4 is a little preview of those. And I think we... I think that they're making the right decision. I, I do. I think they're making the right decision with Mythic Plus. I hate Mythic Plus right now, but I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to. I want to see them continue making Mythic Plus better because there's a lot of people who do like it. What are they doing? They're adding in old dungeons into the rotation. That's number one. Remember, that's something I, 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 dude, I said this shit three years ago, four fucking years ago. I was like, how cool would it be is we could have Mythic Plus SFK. And I always said, what would be the coolest fucking thing is if we got, whenever you complete a Mythic Plus, you got a Mythic Plus legendary keystone. And it was for BRD. It was a baseline level of a plus 20 dungeon. And it would maybe even gear equalize you. I don't know. Maybe that might be too much. And it had a time limit of three or four hours. Mm -hmm. And every boss you killed gave you a chest. Yep. Legendary. Legendary keystones. I've heard and seen that... It's cool. I mean, Mythic Plus is just about my favorite feature out there. That was a lot but of work. Yeah. Running the, no matter what we do with affixes, running the same dungeon for like 18 months straight, it wears a little thin. Bro, maybe. true. True, true, true. Like, I, I swear to fucking God, if I have to see uh, Plague Fall again, I, hate, I, I, I don't even run them. I fucking hate running Plague Fall. But it's true. It's a little thin. Yes. You have all oh, these dungeons. Go ahead. That reminds me. I got a, I got a 15 uh, Plague Fall. You want to do it? No, I already did that one. All right. Yeah, I already did. Actually, oh, no, I think I'm actually need to do it on Fortified. We, we might actually have to do that. Can you do like good DPS? I will absolutely demolish you in DPS. Well, that doesn't mean that you do, do good DPS. Yes, I do good DPS. Okay, maybe maybe we should do it by the end and before the end, and people aren't necessarily that keen on like refarming the same item. You know, 26 eye levels higher each tier. Yeah, it sucks. Um, and we also have Good. this wealth I'm glad you're of this. awesome old content that is still super fun, as we see with things like Legion Time Walking. Yeah. Um, and so, what we'd like to do for, for Dragonflight is launch with eight new dungeons, Great. but have Season 1 of Dragonflight Mythic Plus be comprised of actually four of those new Dragonflight dungeons, plus a mix of four dungeons picked from older expansions that Never had Mythic Plus before, but we can, you know, whether it was no Miss, Miss Challenge mode, Warlord's Dungeon, etc. Probably not Shadowland stuff because that's too recent. Have that flesh out the season one pool. Wait, so they're literally doing what I wanted? What the fuck? Oh my god! Oh my god, guys! It's like this. I, I'm getting tired of winning, man. I, I'm getting tired of winning. This is just too much, man. Holy shit! Mythic Plus Ramparts. I, so I ran Blood Furnace Mythic once on BC, just to show my chat I could do it, and then I will never run that ever again, for any reason. I will never run that dungeon again. No. Then have Season 2 be the four other Dragon Mythic Flight plus dungeons, sword plus runs. four other old ones, and actually basically have complete turnover from season to season in terms of what the pool looks like and really freshen up the experience. I think it's also a huge deal for just the accessibility of that ecosystem. If you're not, if you're someone who's trying to come along later on in the expansion or pick up tanking or whatever else, the burden of community knowledge can very quickly become dauntingly high. Mm -hmm. Everyone figured out the boss. Yeah, that's the same thing I am with Mythic Plus now. Like I, I remember back in Legion, 
Bro, like, and I was the other guy. I was like, what do you mean you're not invising here? What are you fucking stupid? Kick this idiot out. We'll four man the rest of the dungeon. I don't want to play with morons. You know, and that, that's how I used to be, right? And, and like now, I'm the guy. It's like, what do you mean use an invis potion? Oh, I don't have any. Uh, give me a minute, guys. Uh, I gotta go outside uh, and walk back to the entrance. Like, yeah, I have no idea. Like, I was just the worst, man. A and so, yeah, you don't live eight hours a day in Moss Halls. Don't you know about the skip for clicking here so the cinematic goes faster? Yeah, exactly. It's annoying trying to order the tank. Yeah, it's hard. Like, the routing is really difficult to do, and, like, people use add-ons for it. So I think swapping up the rotation more quickly is probably the best idea. Like, a, a lot of... This is the way that, like, a lot of MMOs, or not MMOs, actually, uh, MOBAs like, do, and also, like, Fortnite. Fortnite does a really good job at this. The way that Fortnite avoids metas is that they constantly change the game. It's like, okay, pump shotgun's really good, it's really good, it's really good, now it's garbage. Okay, now you're using auto shotgun. Okay, it's really good, it's really good. All right, now you're using SMG, right? And, like, you're constantly changing the rotation and changing the items that are good. MOBAs, too. Yeah, League does this, too. We just need more balance patches. Mechanics and the me how everything works in the first couple Clash of months. The yeah, and the rest of the community is on, like, super optimization Pod of did. Like, remember that one gun? The DMR? Combine. And if you're just <laughs> coming along trying to, you know, get into that for the first time, that's pretty rough. Whereas I think if it's a whole new set of dungeons, it's both, you know, a new set of items and a new set of puzzles that the community hasn't fully solved that you can join them in figuring out together. That's fantastic. I know a lot of people that are running up into that burden of community knowledge like you talk about and lots of people that are yeah. starting fresh and are getting kind of overwhelmed with the, the front of the game and it sounds like Dragonflight's going to be a much easier expansion to kind of come into when you're ready, which is really exciting. That's this was fantastic. This was awesome. I've had such a great day watching all of the news and I'm so proud of your team and everything you guys have done and I'm just so excited to play it. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you so much. Too. Really appreciate it. It's been, been a pleasure chatting. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I think this is a really good video. Shout out to Hazel for doing it. I think this was great. Like, uh, I think all the questions she asked were like very relevant and important. Uh, I'm gonna link it to you guys. You guys can all give it a like. It's a new video. So, uh, you know, make sure to give it a like and give it some support if you enjoyed the video. And that way uh, she's able to get some more support and uh, get promotion for her videos. And uh, absolutely, Hazel is great. Yeah, I agree. I think this was really well done. I thought it was amazing. Uh, yeah, huge shout out to her. Like, she's actually, uh, yeah, we're going to watch the Holinka uh, interview after now, actually. And after that, I, I will look at the Lost Ark stuff, too. Uh, when is the, when are the patch notes for Lost Ark coming out? Yeah, when are the patch notes for Lost Ark coming out? Uh, did they come, they're coming out tomorrow? I thought they were coming out today. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I thought they were supposed to be later on today. Well, we'll see what happens. And, uh, yeah, Glavier comes out, I think, tomorrow or something like that. I'll probably play Lost Ark uh, tomorrow for a little while and get caught up, do all the, like, the new stuff in South Vern, etc. It's going to be fucking fun. And uh, Sub Tour? Got it. All right, we're subbed. There we go. Let me link the video one more time, okay? Patch notes are, are today. They, they confirmed it. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll have to look at that, too. Elden Ring patch notes? Yeah, I saw that. People were mad that they didn't nerf uh, uh, the, 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 like, fucking Rivers of Blood or whatever it was. So yeah, I'm not too surprised about that. Let's see what people say in the comments. Favorite interview? Ask some incredible questions. I agree. Um, I went into thinking, I wonder if Hazel asked about player housing. Of course she would ask about that. Um, Hazel is a great improvement of your last interview with John Hyde. I, I remember watching that one too. That was the Maw interview. Um, I, I thought that one was fine too. And uh, I think this one's fine as well. Yeah, that's good. And um, great interview, really good questions. Ian was a bit more honest. Yeah, I think that Ian, it's like at this point, I feel like the WoW team has probably just been through the ringer so much that they literally just have, like, there's no ego left to even have. It's like, okay, you want this? Okay, all right, fine, whatever. I'm just going to give it to you. It's like a parent who's just been beaten down so much that they'll just take... The kid wants to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, he's throwing pizza on the floor. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yep, go, go ahead, Junior. Yep, all right, another pizza on the floor. Oh, you want some more money to play the game again? Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, why are you throwing your tokens at your brother? Just, I thought you were supposed to use this. There's a quarter. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and meanwhile, you know, dad's just sitting there fucking, you know, he's just, he just wants to, he just wants to live his life. I know this. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because this is what would happen. Like, with my mom, she would take me to Chuck E. Cheese, 
and she would just sit there and let me do whatever I wanted while she just ate like a, you know, a sandwich or ate a pizza. And that was it. Like, she's like, okay, you want to throw the balls at the other kids? Great. Make sure to hit them in the head. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just fucking get away from me. Let me just relax. <laughs> That's totally fine.